He's just talking about Dairy Queen. Boy. Boy, let me have a taste of that Mr. Misty. No, they brought it out around the time you were born in 60. I like the way it's swish in the cup. Sound like Sammy Davis Jr. doing the soft shoe shuffle. They call that the sand dance. Sound like shifting grains or a fast train. Then little bits of ice tap your teeth and you can chew it on that sweet mouthful of cold melting to nothing before you swallow it down. First time I had one of these, I drank it too fast. Crystals and syrup dancing around and down my throat, chilled like Christmas and New Year's cold breath moving down my chest. And if that wasn't enough, then I felt like my head was about to split right open. Thought my forehead was going to look like that Dairy Queen sign, red and wide like a gash. You know, the ice cream got nothing on your mama's pineapple ice cream. Theirs ain't nothing but soft, light ice milk. They build it high like a steeple, but ain't nothing to that either. You see, your mama's, your mama puts a dozen eggs in her custard to make it rich. The sound of the ice and salt shifting in that bucket as it melts with that electric churns whining motor groaning as that ice cream stiffens up sure is pleasing because I know the ice cream is about ready. You know, there are folk getting their heads split so we don't have to go around in that side window no more. I think I have a lot of poems that have um, frozen desserts in them. <laughs> but um, but uh, but I'm gonna read um, I'm gonna read one from from my most recent book, All Its Charms. Um, and and it's a, a scene that some of you may be familiar with. At the Arlu powwow with my unborn child. Past the pup tents and teepees, just beyond Moe's Indian fry bread tacos, children are doing the snake dance. On the highway, two semis pass, each slung with half a house, and deer leading their speckled young through dead grass give a shiver. Little swimmer of shallow waters, Diver of lights out interior oceans. Who am I to teach you how to dance? I buy earrings made from porcupine quills, lemonade from the most expensive stand, the one where white boys from town crush thick huckleberries into the ice. And I'm embarrassed for myself again. I have, let me think, I have a poem that has dancing in it, but it's, it's a pig. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll do that. Um, all right, mythical swine. Oh, mama pig who shuffles through roadblocks and overturns trailers. Oh, mythical swine who unlocks doors and conjures the warm hands of the living. Oh, pink queen who rules vague scraps and enchanted ever-growing seeds. When you and I come to town, we will heal only the villagers who don't yell out our defects, not the ones who scream, go home, fat sluts, or look at your crazy faces. No, just the girl who lays her head on my lap and whimpers about the heaviness. Here is all snapped threads, she says, rubbing her skull. And you, oh my sweet sow, you begin to play your little pig song. It has no words, but we sing anyway. You dance on one trotter. You make the sun blink off and on. You provoke chemical reactions in the cranial matter. And me, I bring my mouth to the girl's black hair, run my thumb along angel numbers, you illuminate on her brow. Mm. 
Thank Can you. I write Thank your you. poems, Alessandra? <laughs> <laughs> so fun. And also, I just want to say, I thought you were going to read the other pig poem about the oh, pig yeah. king at Flippers. And so I'm like, there. Are, Alessandra has two pig poems. Yeah. I've been writing a lot about pigs. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I don't know if I have anything to add to that conversation. Sean, do you? I, I can go in a couple different directions. I don't, I, I, they're, they're both funny in different ways. Um, <laughs> do you want serious funny or just funny funny? I don't know. Either. Yeah. It's hard. Right. I don't know if it's I have hard. any poems that are funny funny. That All right. I, I kind of blows me away. This is, this is where I get to read both then. How about oh, that? Yes. Right. True. Yes. Right. Do it. <laughs> this is uh, Uncle John from Blitz and Brown Liquor. Um, Uncle John. That was the year Granddaddy Thomas died, left the family worse than broke. Uncle John stole a ham from Mr. Ennis's meat market. He was 17, lost his taste for it, locked up 14 years. Ham, salt cured and earth red, sliced with the fat hanging on, yellow sunshine on a light plate. The ham bone cut crosswise, rings marrow, a dark eye, all in the skillet, making gravy for grits. Lost his taste for all things salt, the ocean he hasn't seen, woman and man. He don't never want to see no more ham on his plate. Hates pigs, it was hard for him. Hates white folks too. Time off for good behavior. They didn't hold him to the last six. He's a hog farmer, only eats beef and chicken and turkey, fish, turtle, and rabbit, squirrel, possum, and coon. And he seasons his greens with smoked oxtails. Can't raise white folks for slaughter. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. I remember that poem. That is one of my favorites from that book. That is such a good poem. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, wow. I love that. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We could leave it there. You could take over, or I can read one more. You, you read another one. All right. Um, this is this form that Alice and Joseph invented, Sweet Hell. Um, and I was like, okay, let's try this thing. Um, P-O-R-K, a sweet L, after Alice and Joseph. For me, the struggle was the pig. It's spelled P-O-R-K, but sounds real close to poke in my mother's mouth, my mother tongue. Like what you might put something precious like a pig in. I forsook the toothsome sweet hell flesh for health 20 years ago. For me, the struggle still is pig, spelled P-O-R-K, and seems to be the favorite meat of my home, Georgia. I've moved to Alaska, sat at the Thanksgiving table of a man who's raised a pig and gratefully ate his ham. 20 years memory seasoned that savored sweet hell flesh. For me, the struggle is the pig, spelled P O R K. Mm -hmm. Yes, what, pigs. What is, so what's the story with that form? I don't know. It was something she posted on Facebook one day, like a few years ago. It was like, I just invented a form. This is kind of it. And I was like, I will try that. Um, it's got a refrain that repeats three times and mm -hmm. yet some other stuff, but yeah. Yeah. I like and, that. I like yeah. that. Well, I, you mentioned Georgia, so I think um, I'm going to read an Alabama poem. Awesome. At the small town drag show. Watching Daisy Pukes take the dollar bill between her teeth shake her fake tits in each boy's peach fuzz face. 
I recall my once praised body as it comes alive again. Long forgotten cat now raised from its shallow backyard grave. Cat with sweat on its fur. Cat that nightly screamed below the kitchen's glass. Cat whose backbend stretch of joy raised her pink pinhole to the sky. Daisy's high heel boots scuff the floorboards. Her nylon blend lashes flutter under fluorescence. And I feel a tingle somewhere. My knees, my tongue. As I pour my sex, it's proud performance back into this dress I've worn like a shroud. I love that poem. <laughs> uh, I wish, I wish I had a poem more similar to that poem the drag the drag poem i do poems. yeah Ugh. um i i can do a i can do a love letter poem which mm -hmm. isn't it's it's a joke <laughs> okay <laughs> um <laughs> love letter after the doctor says this disease will be with you the rest of your life I don't say obsessed lightly. You are my worst ailment. Oh, bloat in my belly, sear in my lip, swell of my thigh. Leaving my skin flushed and shiny, flaked and greased. Of course, I write evil across my arms. And of course, I have no one with me on my bedroom floor. That's my face on carpet and yours stupid on eyelids. I want to teeth you. I want to quit hearing ghost bells and flinching at non-voices. I want your muddy boots at the foot of my bed. I want you to hold me, but this time I won't be bleeding. Whose compulsion is it again? I eat palmfuls of salt and don't know. It's my own hands making me sick, body and mind, and I blame you only on floor laying days, on no meal days, on if anyone sees me, they'll kill me days. Is this world survivable and do you believe it? Is my, <clears throat> is my ma ashamed of my sick slut heart? And are you ashamed? I said heart in a poem, said heart at all. Say what you mean and then strike me. When I get my blood on you, it bangs a dent in my cortex. You do a lousy job filling. Yeah, it'd be a sin, but when I die, I'm gonna molt ghost. Not go to any realm but the block I grew up on. It's pill-popping doctors and their noble red rituals. Yeah, sorry I lost my voice. I love that line, oh. are you ashamed I said heart in a poem. Yeah. yeah. Hearts, they're embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you want to jump in, Keitra? Uh, no, Sean, do you have a conversation to jump? I, you know, yeah, I think maybe, I don't know. Good. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I've, like you said, letter, and I was like, oh, postcard. And then this is kind mm. of sort of um, not love, but something postcard from reconciliation. The speaker of the poem is reconciliation. I sort of imagine what that means, I suppose. Postcard from Reconciliation. You asked my name, what it meant that night in the wine bar. I said to bring back together. You told me your name rhymes with pawn, those places but sounds like shown, held in the mouths of some of your friends down south. Then you brought up micromorts, those slivers of death that measure risk and decision analysis. A one in a million chance, your none too smooth segue to la petite mort, the little death of ecstasy. You tried to woo me and did. The sommelier explained terroir, the notion that a place, its sun, soil, and rain can be tasted in a wine. 
like terror, an eye right before the end. For fear of being alone, I'm writing to let you know I'll be waiting under the shining sign of that wine bar Tuesday week. I hope you find me there. Hmm. Well, I have um, I have an old poem from uh, my first book um, that is not at a wine bar. It doesn't take place at a wine bar, but um, but it's maybe the closest thing that East Missoula has to a wine bar. <laughs> the Reno. You never take me to the bar next to the trailer park. So I don't know if the men stand in circles at the pockmarked counter or if the women have their hair done in curls. I like to imagine that I could be one of them, that you could be the man brushing fine shuffleboard sand from his fingertips, a hidden birthmark like buckshot on your belly. The mirror in the bathroom might be cracked or scrawled with a Merle Haggard lyric, ain't no woman gonna change the way I think. But from here, all I can see is neon going on and off in the rain, the puddles in the parking lot splashing back the blinking marquee, food, beer, jukebox, a place to lift a cold glass to my lips and disappear the last of the gold down my throat. Just beyond our trailer, the sound of trains hitching and unhitching is thunder entering my ribs, and I want it. Hmm. I think they remodeled the Reno since I moved back to Missoula. <laughs> like, makes me sad now I drive by and it's like, <laughs> it's in too good of shape, really. Oh. <laughs> Ain't that just the way? Mm. Um, I'm trying to not read another pig poem because that's my only bar poem. It's also about pigs. I, I really, I have a poem that has a whale in it that I want to read. So if you have a yes. whale poem that you could bring to the table. <laughs> Ooh, I don't. <laughs> ah, I wish I did. <laughs> um, I have a whale poem. Oh my God. But what, what, what do you have to live with? <laughs> Just read something. And we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get there. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Okay. I'll read. Okay. <laughs> I'll do a poem. I'll do another doctor poem. I'm just, mm -hmm. I have so many. I love, I hate my doctor. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> my new doctor and I have a new meds chat. You want to get big God out of my head. Do I know there's something bigger going on? Like Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade Pikachu big, or are we dealing in shiny abstractions? You ply new meds and cute girls who only sometimes like my pouty pics. Everyone has a little OCD, you say. It helps us stay organized. You can learn to laugh at yourself or suffer. Doctor, I didn't know the circus had a clinic. So like, bodies are painless. Life deals in cotton candy. In other words, no one suspects a bruise. Then you're widowing. In other words, suicide, 10 times more likely. Disorder, a menace. In other words, ha, ha, ha. What's compulsion and what's commandment? And you don't know the diff. Yeah, I think. I get it. You think you're so smart. Well, I'm a free range organic clown, pesticide free. So please try sleep, try bark, try spray, try net, try me for me. Your game is head slipped underwater. You slip reminder cards into my hand, then die. When a face groans purple, where does its old color go? Is it my voice calling me evil or is it God's voice telling me to atone? No, ma'am, it's Elvis. What do you think? Go outside. I love dirt. Everyone's either part of it or bobbing on top. 
I'm always indoors because my brain baked wrong. Do you see this as a problem of organization or of cleanliness or ha ha ha, I learn from your white coat. Hey doc, keep your eyes off me. I'd like a little bit of, you know, dignity. It has water, so it made me think of whales. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I actually I, I've changed my mind. I think I'm not going to read the poem um, that has whale in it, but I'm going to read. Oh, no. a, I'm going to read the, a poem that has the ocean in it, and and your water got me there. Um, I I've been telling people that the new book that I'm working on now is all about my wife, and it's full of wife poems. Um, but this poem is is from my last book, but the wife makes a brief appearance, as does the ocean. Essentials. At the U pick, I reach up under the rustling green hems, past the barbed limbs to the fruit, nipple dark and quickening to sugar at my touch. Is it any wonder I think of the first time my hands strayed beneath your shirt, the dumb notes that played on my palms, crushing the held breath from me? But that was years ago, when we had reasons for keeping secrets. These days, we watch the locals make wine, visit other people's castles opened to the public, where we take in the garden and the pool where the poet drowned, now filled in with stones raked into shapes meant to calm the mind. Now, when we walk the beach, anything we find too perfect is made of plastic. I have seen the oceans. I don't need to lose anything else. Hmm. All right. <laughs> um, so I'm going to read this poem about my son, I suppose. At least that's how he, he understands it. The <laughs> poem about me. Yeah. Hello. She, being the midwife and your mother's longtime friend, said, I see a heart. Can you see it? And on the gray display of the ultrasound, there you were as you were our nugget in that moment becoming a shrimp or a comma punctuating the whole of my life separating its parts but before and after a shrimp in the sea of your mother and i couldn't help but see the fast beating of your heart translated on that screen and think and say to her to the room to your mother to myself, it looks like a twinkling star. I imagine I'm not the first to say that either. Unlike the first moments of my every day, the new of seeing you was the first. Deserving of the definite article moment, I saw a star at once so small and so big, so close and getting closer every day, I pray. Oh, I love it. This, this whole book of, of mine, this last book, I mean, you guys know it's so many baby poems, <laughs> so many poems that have a baby in them. And, <laughs> Nella, my daughter, she has her favorites too, because she's like, oh, there's this poem about me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll read, I'll read her, um, her favorite, her favorite poem that's about her. Um, Told you so. When my daughter spills her orange juice, I wipe it off the linoleum with the old plaid boxers of the man I thought I'd marry. Elastic ripped out, seems unraveling. I've had lives already. 
At night, they crawl across my skin before I can turn on the light. We spend all these years wanting, and then one day, sudden as a lamp set to a timer, we have. There were the nights I drank just so I could feel a little more of my own unhappiness. Now, with my feet pressed into this rug, I'll never be that drunk again. Before I went to the clinic to get pregnant, I cried onto the shoulder of an old flame, worried that whoever I loved next would never know my body when it was beautiful. How could I have been wrong about so many things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I don't have any child's poems, but <laughs> I have a poem about my mom <laughs> as a kid, um, which I sent her once and it, it made her cry. It worked great. <laughs> I want to hold my mama when she was a baby. She'll grant me the walnut tree she climbs that I'll climb to on sun riven August days. Our knuckles bloodied by the same bark. Our eyes love scrying Revere, love scrying Boston, love scrying the chain link Atlantic. I want to tell her she can be whatever she needs and hand her the money to make it happen. I want to bring her to the smartest doctors and threaten the nuns into niceness. I'll tell her the white room she sleeps in is one I'll miss. We'll see the same sky the blush and soft of it coming down over Revere, like a widow's flowery curtains. People here speak Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, their own special English. My mama no different, her voice blessed and her words keys to crow. Mama Luke, scala macaron, fazul, maron, chantani. She give you a little sparrow in my hands for once. Let me wash her face. Let me keep her knees off cold tile. Let us roam outside together. Within us, revere sea of traffic and salt and Madonna and no locked doors here. Yeah. I love that poem. Yeah, yeah. I love my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I have a poem I have a poem about my dad um, that's really a really new poem maybe maybe I'll read that one and that'll be my my last one that I'll contribute to this conversation mm -hmm. um, it's we're we're living with my folks right now and um, that is a an experience that is just just very rich in terms of the possibilities for poems. Multi generational household. In the middle of the night, I come downstairs for a glass of water and find my father in the kitchen, high as a kite, the dregs from his vape pen making a murky cloud around his head as he stuffs his mouth with fistfuls of nuts from a plastic sack of trail mix. Tomorrow, he'll turn over a year of his life that men never used to dream of seeing. Tomorrow, he won't remember a thing. But right now, he's lying on the couch, moaning with the pleasure of still being so alive his frayed blue robe falling open to reveal a pair of pajamas I know from my girlhood of riding his back across the living room carpet while he growled like a bear. Now his sock mitten feet twitch in ecstasy as he tells me about the color of tonight's moon. Bitter orange, he says, the sky like a pot of dark chocolate hanging just outside the window. Everyone in the house is busy making their own sleeping sounds. The baby like the faint wash of surf. My wife hopelessly snoring away. 
my mother's CPAP machine filling in the gaps with mechanized white noise while my daughter rolls over to kick her in the ribs. Except this man, who's about to crack open a carton of ice cream, who's decided he'll sleep when he's dead. Father, I might be paying witness to the revelry of your final days. A bacchanalia so confident it makes me want to pour this glass of water over your head instead of down my throat. To wake you from the joyful stupor of your own denied demise. To shock you alive forever with the impossible knowledge of your end. Mm. Mm. Thank little, you. Little, little window into my current life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I, th I think this is where we are in the hour. That that might be where we will stop and maybe take questions. If there if there are questions, I have not gotten any so far. But if anyone has some, you're more than welcome to send them my way. Um, You're probably at this point probably unmute yourselves too. We trust you. Don't ask anything mean or weird. I know you won't. This was awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and we have one question. Uh, what's the hardest part of the writing process for each of you? Mm -hmm. I, I'm thinking about um, Alessandra's poems uh, and, and the one, that one line I mentioned before, you know, are you, um, what is it? Are you ashamed that I said heart in this poem? Is that, yeah. yeah. And, and I've been talking a lot with folks lately about um, the idea of permission and like giving yourself permission. And, and there's all like kinds of different hangups I think that writers have. Like some people, some people don't need any permission to like bear their personal lives in their work. And other people feel very protective of that stuff. Um, some people feel really comfortable being sentimental. And maybe if you're Alessandra, you feel a little like you need permission to put that heart in a poem. Um, I think uh, other folks sometimes feel like, oh, this thing that I want to write about, it's not very poemy. It's not very poetic. You know, I have to give myself permission to, to turn, you know, go into Burger King into, into a poem. So, so I think a lot of times for me, like it's, it's different types of permission, but it's about giving myself permission and saying, that's okay. You can do that. You can go there. You can say it that way. You can, you can be this in a poem. I don't have a question as much as I have a comment. I have a really difficult time writing and I do have to write a lot. So that's why I was interested in sitting here and listening to you guys um, do what you do, which is really fabulous. I wish I could do that. And the great thing about listening to you guys is that when I used to listen to poetry um, back in the days, um, what you always had to do was do a lot of rhyming. Like the last word always had to rhyme with the sentence before. <laughs> so it's great to hear that you just get to follow your heart, uh, mm -hmm. which really makes it unique and a lot more special. So I really appreciate the way that you guys open up and just really speak to what's to your, you know, what's in your heart. So that way we just get to really get involved in it and not have to worry about the way you had to structure it as, as much as you do just tell a story. So that's my comment. I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank, thank, oh, you. thank you. Thank you. John or Alessandra, do either of you want to speak to that comment or to the, the question before that? I, I do rhyme. Um, I mean, I, rhyme is just making music and I, I like making music as just sort of a repetition thing. So I don't let the rhyme drive the poem. Sometimes, you know, the rhyme allows me to find different avenues in the poem. I, I like, I like, I just didn't read any rhyming poems this, this morning. I can read one for you. <laughs> 
it's, it's not a real, you know, it's not a, like always a real yeah. structure. Right. You know, like or it used to have to be like da 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 you know. So it, yeah. you couldn't really follow a story. There really wasn't a lot of you know. It's just mm. anymore. The the poetry is just a story. You know, it's just a, a really beautiful story. So yeah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, permission. That, that, that's a big one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? I just wanted to comment on the um, the rhyming, like your comment about not being able to tell a story, and I just beg to differ. If you listen to Eminem, like I can rhyme and tell a story faster right. than anybody I've ever heard. And those are those are poems from his heart as well. So sometimes you can <laughs> pull out your your real story um, if you are a genius at thinking quick. Maybe I, I'm not sure, but I remember having to write poetry in a structured way in school, and I love poetry. And so when when it became more off the grid or like it like it kind of is now more expressive it was really hard to grasp that i i don't know how to do that really because i'm used to somebody telling me a structure like a haiku or you know just the formation of a poem so it's hard to just write it down and look at it when i do feel like writing poetry and be like this isn't poetry it's a story you know so it's, it's kind of funny that she mentioned it that way i, I like that a lot of times I ask my students to to write in form that has rhyme in it and it's not it's not even that I want their final poem to be a formal poem with a rhyme scheme, but I want them to experiment with making that kind of music. And I do that a lot when I'm taking my own poems through a draft too. So I'll write a poem and it'll just be a first draft and it won't have any, any intentional rhyme or anything like that in it. And then I'll say, okay, I need to give this a good working over. And so I'll turn it into a sonnet and then I'll create that rhyme scheme and that structure and I'll lock it in and oh, it'll be so uncomfortable. Um, and, but I'll make music, this really intentional music in it. And then I'll take it out of the sonnet and I'll blow it up and explode it all over right. again. But there's this, this meter and this rhyme and this like trace of that music that's left mm -hmm. behind inside it. And I'll read it for somebody. And of course, they will not know that it was ever a sonnet or hear that, but they'll feel some music in those words at least that's right. what that's what i believe right right yeah like the sonnet or throwing it into like a mason with the pantoum it's like sort of repetition some sort of some sort of sonic pattern um repetition of of, of you know and the rhyme that the the final sounds of the word or whole lines and then just screw it up just mess it up and see what happens let it loosen up a little because some poems want to be looser some are just happy being in that form too it's like yay i, I did that um but for me you know it, it's not about having written a villanelle so much as writing a successful poem right like if all i can say at the end of the day is i wrote a villanelle then i i didn't do my job mm -hmm. did i write a good poem yeah 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 absolutely well, it is 9.50, so just to be respectful of our presenters' times and everyone else's, um, we might have time for one final comment, um, but I encourage everyone to check out the rest of our events, the rest of today, um, and then also tomorrow. Um, they all have their descriptions on our website and social media, but thank you for joining, and I don't know if you guys have any last words either. Thank you. This was super fun way to kick off my day. Yeah. Thank you so much. This yeah, awesome. thank you so much. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all.